party wagon and hold on to your pizza. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Issue 17. Story by Kevin Eastman and Tom Waltz. Script by Tom Waltz. Art by Ben Bates. Colors by Rhonda Pattinson, with letters by Sean Lee, and edits by Bobby Kernow. The title starts out, it says Krang War. It has uh, Michelangelo and Leonardo fighting General Krang in the first opening panel. Planet Neutrino, Smata City, 10 days now. It says Chapter 1. We see it looks like uh, some spaceships are attacking a gun that's on a rooftop and someone's running away as it shoots a missile. <laughs> it explodes. This attack has gone on non-stop for 10 days. Throughout all of our soldiers have fought valiantly. We see some snipers shooting out of a hole in the roof. They have spilled enemy's blood while sacrificing much of their own. Yet despite the bravery, neutrino resistance fighters are tar far too outgunned and outmanned to withstand this onslaught much longer. There's just a battalion of rock soldiers with large guns that are just coming towards them with uh, above them some bombers that you can see. And it looks like it's not going well for neutrinos. We see the king, the queen, the princess, and uh, the commander as he looks on with some very sad blue eyes. It appears our old friend, Krang, no longer satisfied with simple occupation of our world. He has moved on to complete annihilation. The final battle for our very survival is at hand. Commander Dask? King Zentner? Take your commando team and find Honeycutt, wherever he is. Once you have, do whatever it takes to bring him here as covertly as possible. Let nothing stop you. Yes, your majesty. I fear the professor is our last remaining hope. Without him... All that we love and cherish will be lost forever, says the king. His daughter's in tears. New York City. April, can you please hand me the five-eighths wrench, please? Sure, Donnie. Socket or open-ended? Open-ended will be great. Here you go. We're getting closer to firing this puppy up. Closer, but not quite ready for liftoff yet. I want to make sure that we have fresh diesel in the generator before we start it. Not to mention another tweak or two for the electrical components. Things like that. The last thing that we want down here is an explosion. But, yeah, closer to having a well-oiled machine. <laughs> Great. The sooner you can get the electricity flowing, the sooner that we can start analyzing the serum I took from StockGen. I'm dying to know what the heck it is and how it relates to you guys. Me too. And I know exactly where I want to set up our lab once we get the power up and running. Well-oiled machine, says Splinter as he listens and looks on. Finely honed components coming to form. An effective whole. When individual parts function together as intended... As designed, the result is pure power. But should disorder enter the works, then the machine is at risk of malfunction for failure. You see a picture of Michelangelo sitting reading the note that Woody gave him. Harmony is the key. It's a frustrated Raphael bench presses some paint cans. As harmony must be restored in this family, Otherwise, the once well-oiled machine risks falling into a permanent state of disrepair. It is time for the master to make a tweak or two of his own. I see Leonardo sitting in pensive thought with his sword on his, uh, on his legs, and he's holding Slash's bandana. Michelangelo. Uh, yes, Sensei? Please, gather the others together. I wish to speak to everyone. Yo, Pete's is here. Ah, Casey Jones, your timing is excellent. Ready to dig in, are you, Master Splinter? In a matter of speaking, yes. Please, bring the pizza and join us. He points to the living room area where April and the four turtles are waiting. Another family thing? I guess. Man, you guys do this a lot. <laughs> yeah, did you happen to see Woody? Nah, sorry, Mikey. No Woody, no note, no nothing. Just a fresh pizza waiting outside Rupert's like you said it would be. Uh, okay, thanks. Recently... We have experienced setbacks as we have faced the continuing challenges of this new life. For some of us, friendships have been strained and self-confidence has been shaken. Emotional wounds that sting no less than physical blows all have borne. Just as our bodily injuries heal, so too must our hearts and minds if we are to ensure our survival. And you have all set your minds and bodies to good work. Miss O'Neill's recent procurement from StockGen has provided us with vital new materials, and Donatello has led us to a new home. Raphael found discipline when uncontrollable fury could have easily ruled the day, while Michelangelo and Casey Jones have shown tremendous courage in the face of terrible danger. 
and Leonardo was able to protect his brothers in a battle that seemed all but lost. Now we must take these experiences, this new knowledge, and move forward with purpose. You mean like coming up with a good game plan, right, Master Splinter? Yes, Casey Jones, a plan to gain even more knowledge, in which turn we will be able to use to repair that which has been broken and to fix other things before they need fixing, so to speak. Preventative maintenance? Just so, Donatello. It is becoming clear that our enemies benefit from alliances, yet these are power-hungry alliances built upon greed and hate. And we have something they do not possess, a true family, each member ready to do their part to their own to benefit the whole. Together, we are far more powerful than the weapon that they hold in our hands. And together, we must act. I totally agree with you, Master Splinter, says April. And I know right where we can start. Back on Planet Neutrino, we see one of the commanders uh, with uh, General Krang sitting there in his mech suit. Well, <laughs> that was unpleasant, Baxter vomits. Indeed, your obvious weaknesses aside, we have found it takes humans some time to adapt to interdimensional portal travel. Yes, well, a bit of advance warning would be nice. I don't do nice, Stockman. Really, I hadn't noticed. Then do you notice that the city is on fire in the distance? That is Samana City, central capital to the fetid dung heap, or rather soon to be former capital city, once my army grinds it into rubble. Charming. Did you bring me here just to tell me this? Seems a bit excessive, you think? I brought you here, Stockman, to give you first-hand view of the destruction I am capable of delivering to those who fall into my disfavor. All you call excessive, I call a friendly reminder of who's in charge. Soon I will go on the offensive against Samana City, and while I'm busy obliterating these neutrino scum, you will oversee the completion of my technodrome. General, you're asking the impossible of me. It's true I've made some substantial progresses these last few weeks, but ultimately the technologies involved requires access to a skill set I don't believe exists on Earth. Yes, that. Rest assured that I am working on that little problem, too. You remember the fugitive I once told you about? The escaped robot? Yes. Believe these blasted neutrinos know where the fugitoid is hiding. And when this campaign is through, I will know exactly where it is. Once I have him in my custody again, you will be able to have the help you require to complete your work. General Trag? Bruno Island is Trag. Bring us back. Roger, Captain Trag, stand by. Stockman, stand away from me. I don't want you getting sick on my boots again. Wow! <laughs> Big flash of blue light takes them back through a portal. Back to the Foot Clan compound. We see Karai sitting and sharing a dinner with the Shredder as they sit in a uh, very cold-looking room at a long table by themselves. Why have you not begun your search, Karai? Your mission to bring me the one called Leonardo? I have begun, Grandfather. Your orders are my priority, as always. He casts a side-eyed look at her, and she says, I am producing the necessary elements to assist me in the mission. Necessary elements? Yes, after our last few battles with the Rat and the Turtles, I realized that it is we who must further enhance our army in order to facilitate the capture of our enemy. He pours himself a small amount of sake. Enemy granddaughter, do you not mean my future second-in-command? As you say, Master. Despite your obvious displeasure with this mission, your strategy has merit, Karai. Or it would if it did not require more of the alien ooze component that we currently have on hand. I am aware of that, Grandfather, says Karai, and I will handle that matter personally, she gives him a little smile, as I know precisely where to get what we require. We show April meeting with Chet on a uh, park bench in the middle of the night. It's kind of dark. I wanted to thank you again for hanging out with me tonight, Chet. As long as I've been interning at Stockton, I still feel like I barely know the people that I work with. My p pleasure, pleasure, April. It's nice to get away from the office to talk, th though I I'm not sure you said you wanted to have coffee. I didn't quite know I expect to be here. I are you sure this is safe? The park? Oh, yeah, there's nothing to worry about. I come here all the time to have coffee in the dark. Uh, okay, if you say so. 
Uh, you know, your coffee's going to get cold real quick if you don't drink it. I, I, I don't really like coffee, actually. I'm a bit uh, selective about what I consume. Oh, okay. The turtles and Casey wait in the nearby tree. Okay, that dude Chet's creeping me out, guys. I don't like him leaning over April alone like this. Shh, Casey, we're part of silent cover, don't you understand? Yeah, bro, chill. We're here so she ain't alone. April's doing her thing, so we're doing ours, just like Master said. Besides, April works with this Chet guy all the time when we're not there to protect her. She's a smart girl, man. I never said she wasn't done. I just said that that dude's creeping. There's something about him that I don't know is off. Well, he's going to run off if we don't shut up. I'm just saying. Don't keep quiet and stick to the plan. April does the talking. We listen and observe. I still say something right with that creep, says Casey. Back to April and Chet. Chet, I have something to admit. I didn't just invite you here for small talk. I'm worried. I've been noticing some things at Stockgen, some really odd stuff that doesn't sit too well with me. Odd? How, how do you mean? I mean, all that advanced technology, the secret tests, the locked doors, all that high security. You know, if a person didn't know better, they might think that there was a lot more going on than adver advertised. M more? Yeah, maybe something unethical or illegal or both. Well, I sh 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 wouldn't. Sh 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 of course, that's silly, right? I'm just an intern. But even I know that corporate espionage. I'm sure Dr. Stockman's just trying to protect his company from its competitors. I mean, we've already seen how vicious they can be, right? Who? Stockgen's competitors. We have? Sure. When those ninja guys attacked me at the lab, remember? They stole a bunch of stuff and nearly killed me in the process? Oh, yes, I, uh, I do recall that. That was off. They even stole those four turtles from the lab, you know? The ones you and Lindsay were doing the experiments on? And that really smart rat that used to run around, what was his name? Um, Splinter? Right, Splinter. I mean, why would they steal a lab rat? Do you ever wonder what was up with those shots that you were giving him? That green serum looked like nasty business. Damn, if April ever changes her mind about being a scientist, she's got some sick acting skills. Quiet, Mikey. G green serum? Uh, you, you shouldn't know about that. She cracks a smile. Look, Chet. Of all the people at Stockgen, you've always been super nice and helpful to me, and I really appreciate it. I'm worried about what the heck is really Stockgen up to, and if you're the only one I can trust to talk to about this. I, uh, that's... Please, Chet. I, um... Oh, dear. There's obviously something fishy going on at Stockgen. I just don't know what it is, not completely. But I think you do, don't you? Please, as a friend, my friend, what is it? April, sometimes it's uh, best not to ask questions, but many questions. Sometimes the truth brings together best of dangers best avoided. Dangers to me, to you, and many others. Please, don't tell me you're covering up for something that's going to get people hurt, Chet. You, you don't understand. The last thing I want is for people to be hurt. I, I just can't allow it to happen again. Chet, whatever's going on, you can tell me. I know you're a good person. I can see that you're hurting. Please let me help you. I, I wish I could, April, but this is far bigger than you could imagine. Oh, I think you'd be surprised by what I can imagine. All of a sudden, another portal flashed with a giant flash of blue light. <laughs> yeah, Professor Honeycutt, time to go home. We could see the neutrinos. Looks like Dask, Zack, and Kayla come up with some guns. Casey springs into action, flipping down his mask. I know something was wrong with that dude. Where did they come from, says Donnie. Who cares? We gotta get April out of there. Quite so much for a plan of laying low, says Leo. It was a boring plan anyway. Let's go. C Commander Desk, how did you find me? No time for that, Honeycut. We need to get you back through the portal. By the order of King Zetner. Honeycut? Portal? Chet, what the heck's going on? Who are these people? Soldiers, April, from N Neutrino, my homeworld. Home what? Homeworld, I am. Commander Desk! Don't mean to interrupt, sir, but... Kala and Zack start blasting at the turtles and, and Casey, narrowly missing them with their lasers. We've got company! April, I'm coming! Kala, Zack, hold them off! I've got Honeycut! The, the turtles? But but how? Nerf! Central, this is Dask. Do you copy? Damn, they're fast! Back off, goon! April elbows the commander right in the side, knocking him down. And then Casey grabs her. I got you, April! Casey, I had him! Yeah, sure! All of a sudden, Raph comes up with a swift kick right to the side of Zack's face. Don't you know it ain't polite to point, chump? 
And it's not nice to shoot strangers either. As Donatello upends Kala, who shoots into the air as he sweeps her legs out from underneath her. Leonardo jumps, narrowly avoiding a zap from uh, Commander Dask. Central, this is Dask. Do you read? Oh, I'm going to make it personal, uh, are you? As Zack pulls out a knife. No, just business. Sheesh, enough with the guns already, says Donatello, nearly getting his head shot off by Kala. Put me down, Casey. Sorry, April, I don't want you getting hurt. Fine, she pushes him off. What about the others? Drop the gun, man, says Leo. Back off. I'm only warning you once. All of you stop. I I'll go willingly. Just stop fighting, Zack and, and Raf clash knife and sigh. Commander Dask, we have your coordinates. About blasted time. Engage teleportation. But we read more than now, damn it. Leo, what's happening? I don't know. <laughs> oh my god, Casey. They're gone. Yeah. But where? You see the turtles surprised as they lend up um, in what looks like a battle zone surrounded by rock soldiers with the neutrinos. And that's the end of issue 17. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue 18. Story by Kevin Eastman and Tom Waltz. Script by Tom Waltz. Art by Ben Bates. Colors by Rhonda Pattinson. We start off back on Planet Neutrino where issue 17 left off. Neutrino Resistance Fighters Command Center. We can see that there's a huge breach. There's laser fire everywhere. We've got a battalion of rock soldiers who's coming out of a transport vehicle as the neutrinos try to fight them off. What the? The command center's under attack, says Dak. Kala, Zack, help me. We need to get Honeycut to cover. Well, the what's under attack? Says Donnie. And Honey, and who's Honeycut? Says Mikey. Less asking, more running. We need to get our shells out of the fire zone. Come on. The turtles are jumping and dodging from laser blasts from the rock soldiers. Where the hell are we? Says Donnie. Dask, Kala, and Zack now are trying to fight through a line of rock soldiers. Over here, behind this wall. What about the green ones, Commander Dask? Just worry about Krang's blasted soldiers, Kala. The earthlings aren't as important right now. Sorry, chump. As Raf shows up behind Dask and puts his thigh up to his face. But we beg to differ. Oh my, says Chet. The turtles sneak up and hold the neutrinos by knife point. Idiots, are you trying to get us all killed? Because you weren't trying to do that to us before, right? Says Raph. What? You attacked us, says Kala. After you started waving your guns around. Yeah, we were just trying to save April from you and Chet. Look, I don't know who April or Chet are, but killing you four was never part of our mission. We were sent to retrieve Honeycut. Nothing more. You just got in the way, says Dask. Again with Honeycut. Who is that? The Fugitoid. The what now? Professor, get down! Roar! Whoa! They break through the lines and through the wall, and all of a sudden, humanoid soldiers fighting the neutrinos as they try their best to fight them off. Raph punches one with the back of his side. Yeah. Man, I am getting sick of getting shot at. Join the club, bro! Mikey knocks the helmet off of one with nunchucks as Leo sweeps him out. All clear. Are you okay, Professor? Um, yes, th thank you. Sir, there's going to be more where these came from. We need to get moving, says Kala. Agreed, says Dask. Listen, I told you we didn't want to kill you, but in the case you didn't notice, Krang's thugs definitely will. Krang? Who's Krang? says Leo. No time. We need to relocate ASAP, and either you bunch stand around here like four bright green targets, or you come with us. Your call, says Dask. Leo? I, I don't know. It's just, it's just... Okay, fine, we'll go, says Leo. But we want some answers when this is all done. Hey, if we live through this, you'll get all the answers that you want. Back to the turtle's new lair. And you say they've banished Miss O'Neill? Yes, Master Splinter. There was a burst of light, and then they disappeared into thin air. The turtles, Chet, and those three weird soldiers. Yeah, poof! A burst of light? An explosion, perhaps? I don't think so. When they first appeared, they said something about going through a portal. The sci-fi geek in me says maybe they teleported. Not that I've ever seen anything like that in my real life. Of course, I've never seen human-sized talking turtles until recently either, so there you go. My sons are gone, and I sent them? Again, I am responsible? We see just the, an absolutely determined and fierce look on Splinter's face as he cracks the broom in half. Casey and April look on just in absolute shock, and Splinter is just surprised at what he's done. 
His anger has gotten the best of him again. That, that was unnecessary. Please accept my most sincere apologies. Um, sure. Yeah, Master Splinter, no biggie. We all lose our cool sometimes. Perhaps Casey Jones. But that makes it no less pointless or wasteful. I, we must remember that my sons have all been well trained and are more than capable of protecting each other, even in the most dire of circumstances. You know it. They handle things and get back from whatever they went. You'll see. Piece of cake. I'm sure that you're both right. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be handling things on our end, too. I keep thinking about those soldiers. This isn't the first time I've seen strange-looking soldiers around Chet. There must be some big mean ones at the labs. I mean, the night I snagged those turtle trackers. With pointy ears? No, but they did have some weird skin. Almost like armor. It's all points to stock, Jen. I just know it. And I need to dig a little deeper to figure out what we want to do. Want to go for a ride, Casey? Let's go. Like my hockey coach always says, the best defense is a good offense. Back of the neutrinos, there's laser fire coming in from all sides. The turtles are on one side with uh, the neutrinos, and, and on the other they've got uh, Dr. Honeycutt and Dask. Keep shooting! We'll figure something out! This is insane! There's no way to get past, man! Help! Put me down, you bully! I have her! Now let's go and be done here! By the creator! It's Princess Trib! A rock soldier runs out with Princess Trib. I said let me go! Mikey says, Princess... Okay, we've got to save the princess. Kala, you're with me. Zack, the professor's yours. Anything happens to him, this will all be for nothing. Understood. You ready, Kala? I am. Let's do this, says Mikey as he starts running with whirling nunchucks. Fine, just don't get in our way. <laughs> I was going to tell you that. Great. Mikey decides to save the pretty girl. But who's going to save his ugly butt? The turtles run off after Mikey. Keep those fools off of me. I just got to get this crazy brat to the carrier and then we're gone. I'm going to tear your eyes out, says the princess. Careful, Kala. We don't want to hit the princess with our fire. No worries, dude. Let me th show you a little trick my big bro taught me. As he throws a throwing star and creams it off the back of the rock soldier's head with a tink. Or not. They're still coming. Forget them. We have what we came for. Fall back. Oof. Damn it. They're getting away. Oh, no, they're not. Incoming! Mikey takes a huge jump It missed all this laser fire and gets on. Does a kick and hits uh, one of the rock soldiers directly under the jaw. And then hits the other with nunchucks in the side of the head with a whack crack. Who needs throwing stars anyway? Don't worry, princess. Wait, no! I've got you as he jumps down. Landing on his shell, actually, and then just rolling with a woof. She escaped. Forget her. We've got the other two. Looks like the king and the queen have been of Neutrino have been captured. That should be enough for what General Krang has got planned. Mom, Dad, no! Back at StockGen Research. Okay, I'm inside and heading to the labs. You sure about this, April? This ain't exactly the safest place to be sneaking around. I'll be fine, Casey. Don't worry. Besides, I'm not sneaking. I'm just asking a few friendly questions. That's all. Gotta go. Friendly questions, right? Oh, hey, Lindsay. Just the person I was looking for. April, what are you doing here so late? Well, Chet and I had some important data to go over, but suddenly he's nowhere to be found. I was hoping that you might know where he got off to. What kind of important data? You know, for the turtle retrieval operation? That's highly classified information. Who told you about that? No one told me. I've been working on the project from the start. But no one said anything about giving you clearance. Come on, Lindsay. Do you really think for something this top secret we'd all know what others were working up to? wouldn't stay secret for very long if there weren't multiple levels of security. I suppose not. Heck, I just found out about your involvement recently, when w the last specimen escaped. The last spec- Wait, you know about that? Sure, the other humanoid turtles too, plus the rat and the cat hob. I've been part of the program for the start. My internship has just been a cover. And like I said, I've got some new critical data that Chet needs to analyze ASAP. Chet's not here, so you'll just have to leave the data with me. Sorry, no can do. Levels of security, right? But I really appreciate it if you told me where Chet might be right now. Well, I, I'm not his caretaker, but my guess is he's probably called out to Burnow Island. Burnow Island? Yes. You know, to help Dr. Stockman with whatever he's working on over there for General Krang? Um, yeah, General Krang, yeah. On Burnow Island, sure. So, we see Karai sneaking around in the vents, and she says, Burnow Island. Back to the neutrinos. The princess is there, safe now, as she introduces herself to the turtles with the neutrinos. So they've taken the king and queen, your highness. Yes, Commander Dask. 
We've all thought we were doomed when Krang's soldiers broke in through the inner defenses, but instead of killing us, they grabbed my mother and father and dragged them away. They were trying to do the same to me when you arrived and your friends saved me. But for that remarkable act of bravery, you have my most heartfelt gratitude, Mr. Um, Michelangelo, Miss, uh, Princess, Ma'am, and, uh, you're totally welcome. Smooth, little bro. Real smooth. But we were unable to rescue the king and queen. This does not bode well, says Dask. They were alive when the soldiers took them. For now, but for how long? I don't even know what to think about what horrors Krang has planned for them. Thank goodness you were able to return the fugitoid to us. With him here, perhaps there is still hope for us all, including my parents. Um, no disrespect, Princess, but we have no idea who any of you are or what the heck this is about. And my brothers and I just risked our necks to help save you. You guys promised us answers when the fighting stopped, and we'd really appreciate them now. Starting with telling us who's this Krang guy you keep mentioning. And what the hell's a Fugitoid? In this next scene, Chet transforms into the golden body of Fugitoid. That would be me. The turtles look on, mouth aghast. And their faces are just completely <laughs> blown. And Donatello holds his head like his like his brain may fall out. Then Mikey goes, Sick! <laughs> Dude, Chet's totally a robot! I, I know, Mikey. This is amazing! Okay, the nerd twins drool all over themselves and I still got questions. Like, where are we? And how the heck is Chet a stinking robot? And for once and all, who is Krang? This is the planet Neutrino. That's the Fugitoid. And Krang's the bastard responsible for all this destruction. Please, Soldier Zack, I understand your frustration, but I should be the one to explain. This is true. I have traveled via an interdimensional portal to Neutrino, a planet located in what is known as Dimension X, also home to the late planet Utromion, where my mortal enemy Krang, heir to Quain, the last supreme commander of the Utram High Council, is from. Though few in number, the Utrams were superior in power, and Utraman holding all political and military positions of authority. But Utraman was only the beginning, as they sought to rule all of Dimension X. However, their relentless imperial expansion created critical deficiencies at home. For this reason, I was captured and forced into their service. You see, my true name is Honeycut, neutrino by birth, and once a highly regarded expert in atmospheric analysis among other st studies. I caution them that the primordial ooze that the elemental b basis for all Utram life and technologies was being greatly overused to sustain their imperial efforts. And though they were those who saw m m merit in my dire warning, Quain remained unconvinced. At his c command, the wars continued. Dooming their p planet, the ooze was nearly used up, killing Utromion and most of the inhabitants, including Quain. He refused to heed my clarion call to the bitter end, dying at the helm of his own sinking ship. Those few who did acknowledge my counsel, however, were able to escape Earth and burn our island with enough O's to keep them the survivors in a cryostasis. If the real Utromion was gone, Krang decided he would simply make a new one. So under constant threat to my family's life, I worked to construct a device that would be used to manipulate Earth's atmosphere. Krang called it the Technodrome. But before the device could be completed, the neutrino resistance fighters spirited me away, and this displeased Krang greatly. Krang mounted a massive military c campaign against Neutrino, eventually occupying vital strategic assets despite fierce opposition from the NRF. Sadly, Krang's war also c killed my beloved family, so I escaped to Earth, permanently fused to one of my robotic experiments. This w was where I took up the persona of the one you know as Chet Allen. As Allen, I have worked to thwart Krang's plan to terraform your Earth and the General has not stopped searching for me, nor ceased p punishing Neutrino for helping me escape. And now we need your help, Professor, says the Princess. Our NRF scientists were working on completion of a weapon that would turn this war to our favor, but they require your unique expertise to complete it. That is why my father sent Commander Das to get you. Either we stop crying now, or all is lost. She's so awesome. Put your tongue back in your melon, Mike. You're practically licking the floor. Your Highness, I will do whatever I can to help with this new weapon. No one would be happier to see Krang stopped than me. That's great, but we have a problem. I'm already getting reports that the weapon the scientists were working on was damaged in this attack, and some of the scientists killed. Not to mention we have no clue what Krang has planned for the King and Queen. I, uh, boss, I think we're about to find out. Greetings, Krakens of Neutrino! 
Krang? That's Krang? He looks so pink and squishy. Gross. I am here at your so-called royal palace, which, as you know, has been my headquarters ever since I invaded this dung heap of a planet and sent your cowardly royal family into hiding. But they could only stay out of my reach for so long. Despite the accused NRF's pitiful efforts, the king and queen's escape was a doom to failure. No, but don't take my word for it. See for yourself. So we can see the roughed-up faces of the king and queen in tears. The king is bloodied, both still wearing their crowns. So pathetic, Natritos. I have your royal family, and you have a choice. Either you bring me the fugitoid, or I kill each and every one of you. Starting with them. He places a blaster in their heads. And that's the end of issue 18. Hi, this is Adam, a.k.a. Casey Jones from Casey Jones Livewire, and you're listening to Epic Tales from the Sewers. Time for a knuckle sandwich, punk. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, issue 19. Written by Kevin Eastman and Tom Waltz. Script by Tom Waltz. Art by Ben Bates. Colors by Rhonda Pattinson. We pick up on Planet Neutrino, Neutrino Resistant Fighters Command Center, just where the issue 18 ended, where Krang is holding, um, at gunpoint, the king and queen. This will be your last warning, Cretans of Neutrino. You either provide me with the Fugitoid's location by this time tomorrow, or your beloved king and queen will die followed shortly by the rest of your pathetic world. The turtles, the princess, and the commanders with Fugitoid look onto a screen as they can see Krang means business. And all of a sudden, ksh, cuts out. No! Damn you, Krang! Say the neutrinos and the princess. Damn you! And Zack blasts it. We can see he's the one with the hot temper. Stand down, Zack! Stand down! Stand down! This mission is getting the Fugitoid back was all a waste of time! Krang still has us by the throats and there's nothing we can do! Krang and all this scum, I say we vaporize them all! I said stand down, soldier! None of us are happy about this, and that's no excuse for losing your cool. But, no buts, you sound just like that Utram thug, and you need to stop now! You're a professional neutrino soldier and I expect you to act like one always! Y yes I'm sorry! Don't need to apologize, but I understand your frustration. We've got to keep it together. Yes, Krang has King Zetner and Queen Gilza, but we still have Princess Trib, and we still have the Fugitoids, so... We improvise, adapt, and overcome. This isn't time to quit, people, says Commander Dask. It's time for a new plan. And I think I should know who should be Commander Dask. I will surrender myself to Krang, says Fugitoid. Surrender? You can't be serious. Yes, I am. I have already been the cause of far too many deaths. Giving myself over to Krang saves the lives of the king and queen. Then that is what I must do. No, Professor, you are wrong. That is what you absolutely must not do, says the princess. I am terrified for my parents' lives, but allowing you to surrender yourself would be the last thing that the king and queen would want you to do. You were brought back here to help us win this war, and that is what we need you from you now. I am, um, yes, your highness. Commander Dask, you said the new weapon was damaged but not fully destroyed, correct? That's correct, Princess. Then let's get the good professor to the laboratory quickly, and with any luck, he'll be able to repair the damage and provide us with the technology we need to stop Krang's attack. You and you, escort Professor Honeycutt to the labs. Make sure we get there fast and in one piece, understood? Yes, sir. Whoa, what about us? If Krang Guy really wants to make Earth his new Utramonium, there's no way we can just stand by and let that happen. I need to go with cheer Professor Honeycutt and learn more, said Donatello. I fully understand your concerns for your planet. Donatello. Thank you, Donatello. As I was saying, I understand your worries, but yes, we have more immediate concerns and must address on Neutrino first. With all due respect, Princess, getting destroyed absolutely qualifies as immediate concern in our book. Her Highness said not now, said Dask. Sorry, not a request, says Leonardo as he gets in Dask's face. You will respect pr Commander Dask! We are ready. They are right. They saved my life and we are all indebted to them. Donatello may accompany the professor to the labs. Told you I was smart for saving a raft. Even a blind rabbit finds a carrot sometimes, bro. Huh? Donatello, you say, huh? How fascinating that th you kept the name she gave you. Your Highness, now that the Fugitoid is where he needs to be, it is time for my soldiers and I to do what we do best. We can't stand by while Krang has the King and Queen, so we have to go after them. With your permission, of course. You read my mind, Commander. That is the utmost wish. That won't be easy, Commander Krang. I'll have them in the castle, zipped up tight security, says Kala. 
Yes, you will, Kala. We're going to need some kind of diversion. Something big to draw attention away from them. An infiltration team. Even then, getting in without them will seem almost impossible, boss. Maybe not. What are you now saying? Leonardo, look, I'm not going to pretend I completely understand what's going on here with the science and all, but that's Donnie's specialty. But what I get from the Earth's at risk from the Krang guy, so we've got to stop him. And how do you propose to do that? Simple. You come up with a diversion, and we'll get inside that castle unseen. And why should I believe your crew can pull that off? Because covert infiltration's not a job for an army, smiles Mikey, Leo, and Raph. It's a job for a ninja. Somewhere over Burnout Island, we see a ninja dropping down silently onto the island. Removes her gear, pulls out her arrows, and we can see that it's Karai in full ninja gear. Where the heck is it, Burnout Island, anyway? Says Casey. In the middle of the Atlantic, between North America and Western Africa. Remember, Casey, it was on the geography test you had last month. I helped you study for it. Uh, yeah, I think I might have got that one wrong, as uh, many others do. Anyway, it's too far away for us to get to, but if the turtles were teleported somehow, I suppose it's possible that they're there. I'm just trying to figure out what a tiny speck of an island sitting in the middle of nowhere has to do with Stockton and Chet. Perhaps this General Krang you mentioned is the key to that information, Miss April. I was thinking the same thing, Mr. Splinter, but I've been doing some research. Man, that's one big dude. Yeah, and according to the site, he's had an iron fist control over Burnout Island for decades. He captured the island in a bloody coup, which wiped out nearly all of the indigenous population. I never heard of that on the news in school or nothing. Possibly because Burnout Island has no valuable natural resources to speak of. There's also never been no intervention by the rest of the world or interest. Mankind is rarely swayed into action by compassion alone. Too often it requires personal gain for the driving force. Which makes me wonder what the heck is Baxter Stockman doing there? And what's Crank, this Crank character really up to back in the throne room? You may have the advantage now, Crank, but we neutrinos will never surrender. Not to your tyranny. You're mad if you think you have us beaten. So says the king in the bound hands and bent knees. You both know you rebels are as pitifully weak as you, Zedner. I've no doubt that they'll cave to my demands. And anything to save the useless hides of their precious king and queen. And once I have the fugitoid in my grasp, I will complete my technodrome. Earth will become the new Ultraminium, and all of the Ultrams once again will fulfill our destiny as ultimate rulers of the universe. In truth, they aren't so different, you and I. We both understand what it's like to have the fate of our people in our hands, and how we would do anything in our power to save them. But while I possess the will, the power necessary to save my kind, you do not. Before this is over, I will squash your race beneath my boots like insignificant bugs. They truly are. Planet Neutrino is in the end days, and you will be bound and helpless as you watch your world die. I, you will not prevail, Krang. Yes, Detner, I will. After all, who can stop me? Burnell Island. We see Karai crouching down around a corner in shadow as two soldiers come up. Any scuttlebutt from Neutrino? Only that they were kicking some serious ass over there. Betcha that thing's gonna be over in the next few days, says the soldiers as they pass by. Yeah, that's good. I guess I didn't exactly look forward to having Krang back on the island. That guy's got some major issues. Heh, <laughs> long as he keeps signing our paychecks, who cares? At least it's skate duty around here without any Sergeant Granitor barking at us all frickin' day, am I right? All of a sudden... We see that Karai goes up and slashes one of them, killing him instantly with a gack, and kicks the other in the head, and he goes, The alien ooze, take it to me now. Y yeah, wh whatever you want, don't speak. Just do. She holds her sword directly to his throat, then as he gets up, pushes it towards his back. Back on planet Neutrino. My goodness, Felix! Ah, Honeycut, it is good to see you again, even in your robot form. I and you, I fear you'd been killed when I'd lost seen you. Luckily, no. I came out of this with one less arm, but thanks to your robotic studies, I was able to compensate. See the TMNT micro-series Fugitoid. And who's this? This is Donatello. He is from Earth and has volunteered to assist us in our e e efforts to stop Krang. Guys, this place, this tech, it's amazing. So amazing that it was before the attack. The end missile was badly scorched, fortunately. I believe it was not entirely broken. End missile? 
Electronics nullifying device, a non-lethal weapon I designed prior to my escape to Earth. It utilizes bursts of high-powered microwaves to disable the enemy's electronics, basically knocking out all their weaponry with no collateral damage. By the way, how were you able to find me, Felix? We developed a method to track your distinct radiation signature, and once we were able to triangulate your location, the king sent Das to retrieve you. And now that you're here, we really need to get to work. Krang isn't leaving us much time. First, however, I'd like to completely repair that malfunctioning voice box of yours, Honeycut. Sweet! I can help, says Donnie, super excited. Back to Dask and Leonardo as they prepare their teams for the raid. Okay, these will help us all keep in contact during the raid. These are great, but we need to maintain silence as much as possible. Nothing blows cover faster than unnecessary chit-chat. Yeah, silence is our middle names. Uh, if we had middle names. Or last names. So, we're all clear on the plan? Check. While Dask and Raph's team conducts a full-scale diversionary assault against the palace, the four of us will infiltrate from an unprotected flank. Once inside, we'll extract the king and queen. Excellent. Seems like you've done this before. Been in some pretty good battles, have you? Maybe not as the scale, but... I, I don't know if the battles are ever good. But, yeah, we're definitely done some fighting on our own. Well, I'll happily take your experience in this one. Speaking of which, are you too sure you don't want us to arm you better? I mean, can you see getting too far without with what you're carrying? Cal is right. Bringing knives and sticks to a gunfight doesn't seem tactically sufficient. We'll be in and out before any shots need to be fired. We're ninja, remember? Where's Princess Trib? I'm here. In full battle gear, carrying a rifle. And I mostly, definitely will carry a gun to the fight. Your Highness, you can't be seriously thinking about taking part in this mission. Not thinking, Commander. Doing. I am prepared to do my part to rescue my parents. But, Princess, your parents, they'd never allow me to put you in harm's way like this. I'm, I'm sure they can't permit this. Then I'm equally sorry I'm forced to pull rank on you, Commander Dask. And as your royal princess, you are my soldier. I will join you in this battle. Your permission to be damned. I refuse to stand idly by while my parents suffer. But if you're harmed or worse, killed, your father and mother will never forgive me. Then I suggest you make certain I survive, Commander. Damn. Don't worry, Commander dude. I'll totally take care of her, says Mikey. Leo just goes, uh. So, Raphael, you regretting coming on the big attack instead of sneaking around with your brothers? Nah. Taking the fight head-on works just fine by me. Well, that's good, because the fight's going to be about as head-on as they get. Speaking of fights, I hope we're square about the knife upholding you back on your planet. Yeah, it's cool, Zack. Nothing, like you said, nothing personal, just business. Hey, Raph, I'm going to be the princess's bodyguard. Righteous, huh? Say what, Mike? Don't encourage him, Raph, please. Hey, don't go try to be a hero, okay? Nah, no worries, Leo. I'll be all right. Sides, Mikey's the superhero around here, right? <laughs> I guess so. I'll see you when the butt kicking's done, big bro. You better, as they fist bump. Donnie, this is Leo. Do you read? Loud and clear. Go ahead. Look, we're getting ready to roll out. If you changed your mind about staying behind... No, Leo. I'm right where I need to be. You guys get the king and the queen, and I'll see what I can do about saving Earth. We can see in the background they're fixing the missile. I must thank you both again. Having a functional voice box is beyond relief. I, I feel like a new robot. Sure thing, Professor. Are you all right, Donatello? Yeah, Professor, I just worried about my brothers. That's a, that and the whole Earth getting terraformed and enslaved by a pink squishy alien thing. Man, this has gone from bizarre to insane so fast, it's hard to just wrap my brains around it. Well, if we can defeat Krang, the terraforming problem may be moot. And if we don't? Then my best estimate is accurate. Krang's technodrome will be completed in approximately two years, and Earth's only hope may be in the hands of Krang's other enemies. Other enemies? Yes, even as Chet Allen, I fought against Krang's evil scheme in a way that there were no means honorable but necessary. Sadly, if we lose this war, only time will tell if my efforts were enough to save Earth. Th that that's it. That's where they keep the green stuff in. Be silent and open it. Beep. He opens it. She stabs him right through the heart with her sword and he falls to the ground. Karai goes in and she sees. Looks like holding tanks and green ooze of Utrams. She looks on and raises a blade to cut off their uh, life support. Then we see some exposition from Zack. Any way you slice it, this is madness. Our chances of surviving this attack are about a million to one. That's not ever stopped us before. Who wants to live forever, right? Fire! Raph and Zack and a whole line of Neutrinos tanks take on head-on to the rock soldiers, and they start blasting them in a full-on frontal assault. Watch it blazes, says Krang as he's shaken. 
Captain Trag, sit rep. On it, General. Sergeant Creditor, what the hell is going on? The NRF are attacking a force, Captain. Armor, artillery, ground troops, you name it, sir. Looks like they're gonna throw everything they got to try to get us back to King and Queen. The idiots! Why would they dare face me in an open battle rather than give me the wretched robot? Granitor, this is Craig. I want you to launch a full-scale counterattack on those imbeciles. Nothing held back, do you understand? Smash them, burn them, kill them all. Understood, General. You heard them, men. Return fire. <laughs> One of the tanks next to the turtles explodes. Holy! Nothing holy about that, pal. And we're about as good as dead if we stay here. All right, neutrinos, for the king and queen attack! Charge! So we have a line of tanks attacking uh, another line of tanks with rock soldiers and neutrinos blasting at each other in a rather epic scene with just laser blasts going everywhere. Time to get this show on the road, says Leo. And your highness will not take any undue risks, please. Now do my best, Commander. Just stay close to me, Princess. I've done this like a zillion times. Thank you, Michelangelo. I shall try. As one of the soldiers that's uh, guarding the side of the door is lighting up a cigarette. So it looks like Cal and Leonardo put them in sleeper holds and knocked them unconscious. This is very real now. Yep, says Commander Dask to Leonardo. The point of no return. Raf jumps off and goes to attack as Zack still fires on that cannon. The turtles infiltrate and you can see various scenes of just what's happening. As they get closer and closer you can see the turtles working in conjunction with the neutrinos. Michelangelo's nunchuck knocking out one. The butt of a rifle knocking out the other. Zack jumps away as and Raf jumps away as their tank is destroyed and they're in the middle of that fight. And then all of a sudden the turtles and Dask just go into another room where it happens to be Krang. Okay, friend. This is it. Do or die. As the two stand among just an entire battalion of rock soldiers and planes that are trying to kill them as the turtles attack Krang. And that's the end of issue 19. It's pizza time. And now in a segment that we call pizza time where we discuss any Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle or pizza related food, I give you pizza time. Okay, this is a weird one. So this one I'm going to go with today is the chocolate chili pepper pizza with butternut squash. Ingredients. Two cups cubed butternut squash, half inch pieces. One teaspoon plus two teaspoons plus two tablespoons of olive oil plus more for greasing. Fine sea salt, freshly ground black pepper. One large yellow onion chopped. Three medium garlic cloves, pressed or minced. One or two chipotle chilies in adobo sauce, chopped. 2 teaspoons of chili powder, 1 teaspoon ground cumin, 2 tablespoons smooth natural peanut butter, and a handful of corn tortilla chips, 1 teaspoon dried oregano, 1 and 3 quarters cups of low sodium chicken broth, 3 ounces unsweetened dark chocolate, chopped cornmeal, oh, 3 ounces unsweetened dark chocolate, chopped, then cornmeal for flour for dusting, 1 pound ball of pizza dough, homemade or store bought, three quarters cup of shredded jack cheese, one to two tablespoons finely sliced scallions, white or light green parts only, one quarter cup sour cream, two tablespoons crumbled queso fresco or mild feta cheese. Instructions. Now this is a long one, so pay attention. To make the squash, preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit with racks in the center and bottom third positions. If you're using a baking stone, place it on the bottom rack. Dump the cube squash into a heavy-duty rimmed baking sheet. Toss it with one teaspoon of the oil and season lightly with salt and pepper, about one-eighth teaspoon of each. Roast for about 30 minutes, stirring halfway through until the squash is tender and beginning to brown. Remove the squash from the oven, then set it aside to cool slightly and increase the oven temperature to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. To make the mole, while the squash rolls, roast, take the chocolate, a.k.a. mole sauce, heat the remaining two teaspoons tablespoons of oil in a large skillet over a soft pan saucepan over medium high heat add the onion to the pan and give it a pinch of salt and cook stirring frequently until the onions begin to soften up in a bit about three to five minutes toss the garlic and cook for one more minute stirring constantly transfer the onion and garlic mixture into a blender or a food processor along with the chipotles chili powder cumin peanut butter tortilla chips oregano and chicken broth puree until the mixture is smooth and uniform in color pour this mixture into a medium saucepan and place over high heat when it begins to boil reduce the heat to medium 
Cover the pan and cook for 20 to 25 minutes and let the flavors marry and intensify. Step four, remove the lid and stir in the chocolate until it's completely melted. Taste the sauce and add more salt and pepper if desired. Step five, remove from the pan from the heat and set it aside to cool slightly. For assembly, on a baking stone or steel pizza peel, dust the pizza peel or inverted baking sheet with cornmeal or flour. On a baking sheet, lightly coat a heavy-duty rimmed baking sheet with olive oil. Stretch and roll the dough into a 12-inch disc and place it on the prepared pizza peel or baking sheet. Step 2. In a medium bowl, toss the roasted squash with one-third cup of the mole sauce. Step 3. Spoon about one-third of the remaining mole sauce into the dough and spread it out evenly, leaving a one-fourth inch border around the dough all around. Step 4. Transfer the mole coated sauce to the dough and just arrange it in a single layer. Top with jack cheese. Step 5. Shimmy the pizza from the peel into the hot baking stone and transfer it to the baking sheet to the oven. Bake for 8 to 15 minutes or until the crust is golden brown. Step 7. Remove the pizza from the oven and let it rest for 5 minutes. Sprinkle on the scallions. Step 8. Scoop the sour cream into a small resealable plastic bag and snip off the tip of the bottom corner. Step 9. Pipe the sour cream in a zigzag pattern over the pizza and sprinkle on the queso fresco. Slice and serve. Save the remaining mole sauce for dipping sauce for the crust or tortilla chips. It will give it an... It will keep in an airtight container in the fridge for up to one week. Lighten it up, dudes. Use whole wheat pizza dough or use salt-free chili powder. Make sure that you use natural peanut butter. Contains only peanuts, no extra salt or other additives. And swap the sour cream with a low-fat yogurt. And that is your weirdest one yet. The chocolate chili pepper pizza with butternut squash. Cowabunga, dudes! Thank you for listening to the Epic Tales from the Sewers podcast. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. This podcast has no affiliation with Eastman, Laird, Mirage Studios, IDW Studios, Archie Comics, or Nickelodeon Studios. This podcast is a member of the Dorkening Podcast Network. Check out thedorkening.com for other podcasts. Epic Tales from the Sewers is recorded by Justin Cooper and Eric Will. Hello, intrepid listeners. This is the Generation Playlist Podcast, a podcast about music where we are your guides through a particular group or artist. We talk about the music, and then we make a customized playlist to share with you, our listeners. And you can check us out wherever you listen to podcasts and find our playlists on Spotify. Do you like retro video games? 80s and 90s toys and have a love for nostalgia. Hi, I'm Russ Lyman. What's up, guys? I'm Jay, the NES addict. Welcome to the Weekly Warp Pipe. Jump into the Warp Pipe with us and go back to revisit all the awesome things from our childhood. That's right. Every week we discuss something new like the hardest NES games. Or what it's like to get prizes out of cereal boxes. What our top 10 toys were. (laughs) Battle Beast. No, dude. It was Ninja Turtles. Oh, yeah. Cowabunga. Cowabunga. So be sure to check out theweeklywarpipe.com for more info. And we're proud to be a part of the Dorkening Podcast Network. That's right. You can join us every Saturday at 7 a.m. for new episodes anywhere you listen to podcasts. Or catch the video version on YouTube at the Weekly Warpipe channel. That's the Weekly Warpipe every Saturday at 7 a.m. The Weekly Warpipe. Do you like gaming? You know, this game would be better if it was a battle royale. Do you like technology? I bet this tech would work better if it was a battle royale. Do you like movies, TV shows, and everything else that me and Nate can't agree on? The Last Jedi was easily the best Star Wars film I have ever seen. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Everybody in this room is stupid now because of you. Talking Gaming and Tech is a bi-weekly podcast where we cover the latest and greatest in gaming and tech. Now part of the Dorkening Podcast Network. Talking Gaming and Tech is a podcast produced by Tech Prime Media. You can find us on YouTube and all their social media platforms. You can find Talking Gaming and Tech on Apple Podcasts or wherever else you get your podcasts from. This podcast is filmed live. If you want to check us out while we're filming live, remember to follow links on social media and your comment might be read on air. It took me 10 years to make the perfect man cave. And then we took it over. And we made it into the multiversal chamber. Then I started my own podcast. And we took that over too. And we're the co-hosts, the Multiverse Kids.
Yeah, and I'm the dad, the geeky dad. And every week, we what? We review the movies, shows, and books, games, and toys. Yeah, and sometimes we even have a special guest. So, join us every week on the Geeky Dad Podcast.